Well, good morning. Oh, I'd forgotten how cute you are in the morning. Oh, when your hair was like that, I loved that haircut. Oh, um... <laughs> uh, no, I guess I am being a little weird, huh? My hair? Oh, <laughs> no, um... No, I didn't dye it. It's just gone a little gray. These things are want to happen. <laughs> yeah, I suppose they sneak up on you without you noticing. Oh, I, I do have work today. I um, just wanted to spend some time with you. Have a little chat alone. <laughs> Look, don't, don't, don't worry about the hair right now. Um, I want to uh, play a little game with you, okay? Kind of a little role play. No, no, not like, I mean, hmm, no, not like that. Uh, we're going to pretend that I am here from the future. <laughs> Oh, well, uh, it, no, 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 it, not that kind of time travel, well, it, look, okay, I, in this roleplay, I cannot go back in time to other people's history, only my own, so I can't, like, go back and prevent any evil dictators from happening, okay? Uh, I didn't make up the rules. Oh, well, I suppose this, this is my game. I, I did make up the rules, but, but I, I, I didn't make up the rules. It's just, just accept it, please, if you can accept. You can accept a time-traveling wife from the future, but you can't accept that I'm only going to be able to visit you. Well, I could have visited my mother, but my mother... <sighs> Just say thank you. Just say, oh, hey, one person in your entire history that you were going to come back and see, and it's going to be me. You mean, of course it would be you. Wow, you think it... Okay, you know what? You know what? There are times when it wouldn't have been so, of course it would be you. Okay? That's all I'm saying. But actually, actually, that's what I want to talk to you about. There was a time, there will be a time, when um, y you and I get into a, a really ugly fight. And we were both wrong, but I said way harsher things. And um, throughout most of our relationship, uh, I'm, I've been pretty good. Uh, m not not as good as you are. You're pretty good at not escalating things, and, and I, I appreciate that. Um, this was some extraordinary circumstances. A, th a lot had been going on. There was a lot of pressure on both of us, and there is no excuse, but I said some really ugly things, and you took them to heart. Uh, well, I mean, yes, I, I should talk to myself. I, I would, can you... Okay, can, can you imagine what it would be like, though, if you saw yourself from the future? Wouldn't that kind of freak you out? I mean, you're just looking at me, and you see your wife, and, and okay, I've got gray hair, but you just see your wife, and if I were to see myself, that would be a little bit freaky. Okay. So I figured I have a better chance of talking to you and getting you to hear me in, in this, in this uh, role play scenario. <sighs> Can you please stop commenting on my face and makeup and how well I did at making myself look super, super old? Can you not do that? That's hurtful.
Okay, you know what? You're not always going to look as young and cute as you are now, either. Alright? I'm just saying. What? No, I I'm not saying I won't still be attracted to you when you're old. I'm, I'm saying that... I'm saying that, um... As we get old, sure, we, we wrinkle and we get older, but you know what? Uh, we still look at each other and see the same young people that we were when we first fell in love because our eyes have gotten bad and we can no longer see the wrinkles. It's okay. We're okay. Look, I am actually here to tell you something, right? Thank you. Okay, so... It was a situation. It was a rough time for us. I said some things that were really ugly. I, I told you that... I told you that you didn't give a damn about me and the kids, and that I was out of there. And I... Oh, yeah. Oh my god, they are great. And you're going to love them so much. You do love them so much. You're going to be proud of them. But, but, no, 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 no. I'm trying to talk to you about something. So I said, quote, I'm out of here. And what you heard was, I want a divorce. And I didn't know that at the time. I didn't know that for a good year afterwards. If I'd known, I would have clarified right then, right there. But that's not what I meant. I meant literally, I'm out of here. I, I, I walked away from you right then. We were in a store. I, I, I walked out of the store. I mean, no, you weren't... You weren't completely unreasonable for thinking it. We'd been bickering. I'd been touchy with you for days, and I was finally blowing up, and I was hissing at you under my breath, and, uh, it was ugly. And my tone was really, really angry, and, and I cursed, and I, it doesn't matter why I thought you didn't care about me and the kids, I knew that you did. I knew that you did, I just... It was a stressful time. Why was um? Uh, we 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 were we were on vacation we, with your family. Yeah, yeah, yes, her too, and and that was the big part of the problem. She'd said something silly, and our oldest got her feelings hurt, and I was. I wanted to clear it up. I, I knew that it was a miscommunication, a misunderstanding, but our oldest had her feelings hurt, and you kept saying that you were going to talk to her, you are going to talk to her, you are going to talk to her, but the time never came to talk to her, and you didn't want me talking to her, which was perfectly understandable, because my way of talking to her would not have been kind. And so, after a few days of very close quarters with a lot of people, I blew up, and... <laughs> I mean, it was quiet blow-up. Oh, no, 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 no. Your family didn't know. Nobody knew. It, it, was, it was super quiet blow-up. But it, it was... You and I both knew that I was furious. And I'm so sorry for that. No. We, n we never get into the habit of fighting like that. No. It was an anomaly, and that is part of why you were shocked and surprised and took it so to heart. Um, but you did take it to heart. And, and I didn't know for um, a good year. Almost a year. Uh, six months later, you met someone who was very interested in you. And you let her turn your head. 
because you thought I didn't love you. You were wrong. You were so wrong. And I will own what I did. What I said was awful. My tone was ugly. I understand why you were surprised and felt so hurt by it. But I told you every day that I love you. Every day. And if you believed the one time I said, I'm out of here, and you thought that meant that I was leaving, if you believed that one time when I was angry, as opposed to every single day we were together, then that's not on me, that's on you. You chose to believe that as opposed to every day that I told you that I loved you. So that's why I'm here today tell you, to remind you, to let you know. You don't have to accept when I'm saying ugly things. You don't have to just take abuse. I'm not asking you for that. But you don't get to have an affair and then blame me for not loving you. I don't know quite how this will work. I don't know if preventing it is as simple as forewarning you. I do know that you're genuinely sorry. I do know that we love each other in spite of everything that we've done. But I also know that for both of us it's a bell that we can't unring. The funny thing is, though, although we've learned how to do limited experimental time travel, I, um, I don't know if we figured out what is inevitable or not. <laughs> it is entirely plausible, and it seems almost likely that by coming here, if you listen, then you don't have an affair, and if you don't have an affair, then I don't come back to warn you. And if I don't come back to warn you, then you go through life thinking that I don't love you for a year, and you have an affair, so that I have to come back and warn you. I don't know if we're all just doomed to live in this cycle. I don't know if anything is ever actually preventable. And I really suspect nobody ever figures it out. Well, because I think if they did, we'd have heard about it. Somebody would have come back and told us. <laughs> As it is, I've only heard of a few people going back, and it's usually just to see people one last time that they hadn't seen in far too long. We do know that it becomes more common in the future because we've been increasingly getting visits from decades ahead. But right now, not a lot of people get the privilege. Not many people have access to that type of thing. Oh, um... <laughs> I got to go because our son is a scientist, and he's a very good one. <laughs> you are going to be so proud. All right, I have less than 20 minutes, and it's more than halfway up, so... It's been a fun game, hasn't it? <laughs> Just try to remember it. Keep it in mind. About ten years from now.
Oh, um... This should probably be our little secret. And people would think you were a little bit nuts. <laughs> right? Especially... me. Well... Because when I get home from work today, I'll know that I haven't had a conversation with you. <laughs> I'll be too busy focused on the maple tree that fell on our porch after it was hit by lightning. No, you're right, of course it hasn't. And of course, nobody could predict where lightning is going to strike. So I guess when it happens, you'll have to just rethink whether this was a game or not. That's actually why I chose today to have this conversation. I figure when that lightning strikes, you'll know that, um, this wasn't a game. And when that tree stump is there for the next 20 years, I'll have plenty of reminders of what I told you. That there is not a moment since the day we met that I didn't love you. I'm giving you a chance to not screw it up. I love you. I will talk to you later. <sighs> All right. How do I get this thing to work? Oh my God, what are you doing here? No! You were supposed to go talk to young me. I was going to talk to young you. So we don't freak them out. Look at him. He's going to be traumatized. You are going to be traumatized. Have fun with that in therapy. We are the world's worst coordinated spirits of Christmas future ever. All right, you know what? It's time for me to go, but it's just as well you're here. Can you take a look at this for me? Yeah, I can't see which button I'm supposed to push with my... my I left my reading glasses back in the future, so could you... Oh, is that what that was? Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, I will see you later. Don't forget we've got the grandbaby's tea ball this weekend. No, yes, you do. You always forget. You're always there because I always call and remind you. All right, you, whatever you say. Okay. Oh, time's up. I've got to go. Hey, uh, cupcakes. I hope you enjoyed that one. Let me know how you feel about it. I was a little, I'm usually a little hesitant to put my listeners in the position of possibly the bad guy. Um, and uh, I don't think of this listener as this character as, as the bad guy, but I can also see somebody not wanting to be in the position where they are the ones who had the affair. Um, I kind of just wanted to talk about the sad things that happen when people don't communicate well. And I do know that some of you Kind of like the idea of playing the bad guy, but also uh, probably not that kind of a bad guy. Anyway, let me know what you thought about it, and I will not make it a habit <laughs> of painting you into the corner of cheating bastard. Did that sound bitter? Did that sound embittered? Did that sound... Like it stemmed from trauma. I think we've all been on the receiving end of some of that behavior. But anyway, I didn't think of that character as being bad. I just thought of him as being a victim of miscommunication. Both of them being a victim of miscommunication. And yes, you should talk to people. And yes, if you don't think a relationship is right for you, then you should be getting out of it as opposed to having an affair. But... People are not perfect and things happen. So that's not accepting the behavior. That is just recognizing that good people sometimes make bad mistakes and it doesn't take an evil person to do something like that. Anyway, moving right along. Um, it's time to give thanks to everybody. I love this part. 
All right, today I have to thank my patrons. Hungry Hippo. Gilberto Ricciero, I think. I hope that was pronounced correctly. Please let me know if it was not. Alex Willett. Quincy Jones. Oh my goodness, Quincy Jones. Oh, your daughter Rashida is amazing. Adam. Kobe Ewing. Kill switch engage. That doesn't sound threatening. Old Bean UK. Jonesy. The Bi Agenda. King Keeley. 21. Kira Agreste. George Thurn. Anonymous. Chris Arctic Penguin 92. Duke is here. Kalua Bear. Titan O'Grady. Jesse. Kolek 92. Bralia Vargas. KJW. Sean. Wylan, Seth the Mess, Rayson Hong, Kaguzo, Nick, Synergy 12, Forces, I show you my egg, please respond, <laughs> Raptor, the Swaggy Llama, Benedict's 9, I Ironhead 333, Anzu Wiley, Nick Roberts, Cody, Nachtwaya, Emperor of Mankind, Skull, Yuri Boygon, Weebigoy Epic, Mike, Fit External, Cherry Was Script, Art Low, Vicious Rowan, Jules, Solitary Surreal, Pierce the Heavens, A Red Bow, Jacketeer, Adrian Haslinger, Jake C., that one other Jake, Uh, cr crouching Dave, hidden crotch grab. Uh, Tonberry Shuffle, Christian Kuleipa, uh, <laughs> Jack H. <gasps> and um, Dweemies, Guardian of Doom. <laughs> now we sing the Doom song. Sorry, no, I got that. I mispronounced that. <laughs> it's... <laughs> Dweemies, Guardian of Doom. Now we will sing the Doom song. Uh, thank you, guys. <laughs> and thank you to everyone who is listening. Thank you to everyone who shares and who likes and who comments and, oh, you guys are so great. I am so fortunate to have you all tangentially in my life, so thank you for being here. Go out, have a great day. I hope you will be as good to yourselves as you are to me, and I will talk to you tomorrow. <laughs>